Hey, what up, y'all? My name is D, and welcome back to Book Reviews from a Regular Dude. Yeah, I'm not going to change the name of the series. I think it's catchy. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you and welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm really glad that you enjoyed my review of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Or is it Yaros? I never checked. After that video went up, I posted a poll on my community tab asking what you'd like me to review next, either Iron Widow by Jian Zhe Zhao or The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. And it was pretty close, but Iron Widow won. So today we're gonna talk about Iron Widow by Jian Zhe Zhao. Jian Zhe Zhao. Jian Zhe Zhao. I can't... <sighs> I feel so dumb because I watched like five interviews with this author trying to get the pronunciation right, and I just don't think I'm doing it. This is one of the best books that I didn't like very much. Well, it's complicated. We'll get into it. If you don't know what Iron Widow is or what it's about, I'm going to read the premise. Iron Widow is a 2021 Canadian YA science fantasy novel by Zian Zhe Zhao. This novel is a mecha reimagining of the rise of Chinese Empress Wu Zetian set in the nation of Huisha, a futuristic reinterpretation of medieval China. The boys of Huisha dream of pairing up with girls to pilot chrysalises, giant transforming robots that can battle the mecha aliens that lurk beyond the Great Wall. It doesn't matter that the girls often die from the mental strain. When 18-year-old Zetian offers herself up as a concubine, it's to assassinate the male pilot responsible for her sister's death. But she gets her vengeance in a way that nobody expected. She kills him through the psychic link between pilots and emerges from the cockpit unscathed. She is labeled an Iron Widow, a much feared and much silenced kind of female pilot who can sacrifice boys to power up the chrysalises instead. And I'm going to stop there. I hadn't heard much about this book, like I hadn't heard a lot of reviews or people's opinions about it before I read it. I bought it because I thought it sounded cool. Like that premise is really cool. Apparently this book draws a lot of influence from anime like Digimon, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and Attack on Titan, which is dope. I love anime. And I think it's really cool when a book draws influence from different types of media. I think The Starless Sea is inspired by video games, more specifically an RPG, I, I think. I don't know, I just think it's cool to explore worlds like that through the lens of a novel, you know what I'm saying? I guess that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about this book, so we might as well just get into it. Spoiler alert, there's going to be spoilers, but only mild ones. I'm not going to talk too much about what happens in the book because I want people to still enjoy it if they haven't read it yet. So first off, like I said, I love the premise and the world that's being built here. I already listed a bunch of anime that this book is inspired by, but I, I think I heard that it's also inspired by Pacific Rim. And at the very least, it's giving pretty heavy Pacific Rim vibes. You know, giant robots being piloted by two people fighting mysterious monsters. I will say that Pacific Rim has something going for it that this book does not, and that's Guillermo del Toro as director and Idris Elba. Fun fact, I used to do stand-up comedy and I once did a show with Idris Elba's sister-in-law. But this ain't story time, this is a book review. I love the author's prose. The writing is vivid and vibrant and raw. I don't know if it's part of the YA fantasy genre, but I've read a couple in the last few years and the ones that stand out to me are the ones that have prose like this. I wouldn't say that this book is like full of twists, it's not a psychological thriller, but at the same time I genuinely did not know where things were going to go. Like even early on in the book when Zhe Chen gets her revenge, I didn't think it was going to go down like that. I thought that Zhe Chen was going to learn that Yang Guan was like not the one who killed her sister and it's bigger than him and he's actually not such a bad guy, but he is. He is such a bad guy. And she like whoops his ass psychically and I thought that was hype. And yeah, every time I thought this book was gonna zig, it would zag instead and be like, oh, what now, you little bro-y cinnamon roll looking ass boy? I thought the power system was really cool and well thought out. And I love that Key plays a role in operating the chrysalises. Those are the giant robots, by the way. And the chrysalises have different forms. Like what? That's so anime. It's kind of Power Rangers, I love it. I think that this book does a pretty good job of exploring themes like living in a patriarchal society going against tradition, going against what your family wants you to do, being your own person and not being who your family or what society tells you to be. I was going to say without being too in your face, but it is so in your face, but it's written well. So it's not like annoying or preachy. To me, it's the difference between making a reader go, oh, damn. Instead of like, all right, damn. Also, I like this love triangle. In my last video, I said that I don't really like love triangles, and that's true most of the time. It usually feels like there's the main couple and then another person who's just there to kind of add tension or stir the pot. 
but the choice is really clear who the main love interest really is. And sometimes the choices aren't clear, but that's because both choices are bad. And I like that in this book, there's tension in like both the choices and one of the love interests. It's it's kind of like a slow burn. It's subtle. And I think it's really sweet in its own weird way. And the tension gets resolved, mild spoilers, by all three parties getting into a polyamorous relationship. Kind of a triad or a thruple. I don't know. I've never been in one. Another fun fact, I was once in a love triangle, but wasn't really aware of it. I liked this girl back in high school, but she also liked this other guy. And she was like, oh no, don't fight over me. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I don't want to fight Matt. He's a really solid dude. I just kind of dipped. And then her best friend asked me out like the next day. It was kind of messy. Anyways, let's move on to things I was a little conflicted about. I had a really hard time with this main character which I was really confused about because she's very similar to the main character of one of my favorite fantasy series, the Burning series by Evan Winter. Like obsessed with getting revenge for the loss of a beloved family member, upsetting the system and getting famous for upsetting the system. So I was like, what's the difference between this character and this character? And I realized that the Burning series is narrated in like third person and past tense and iron widow is narrated in first person in like active active present tense person narration creates like intimacy between the reader and the character providing the narration and it being in present tense really puts you in the story like you really get inside their head but i don't really want to be in this girl's head she's mad and sad I, I got issues of my own but all the same like she's a great character she's badass and i do really enjoy watching her kind of like have all these walls up, start to bring them down, and then rebuild them. And and I like that her development isn't uh, just straightforward. It's kind of one step forward, two steps back, or two steps forward, and one step back. And that just makes her feel more like a real person. I also had a hard time with like one of the main supporting characters and one of the love interests, Lee Shamin. I resonated with him a lot, which made me like him, but it also made me very sad. A lot of his pain reminded me of my own. And he's, he's kind of like an alcoholic, and I struggled with my own addictions at one point. I've been sober for just under a year now, and I don't know, it's just tough to be brought back to that place, and it, it, it was hard to read. And to be honest, this book is really intense to the point where I, at different points I just needed a break, so I would like stop reading and listen to a podcast for a couple minutes or like listen to a happy song just to kind of reset. I guess there were a couple of things in this book that I just straight up didn't like, but not really from a craft perspective. I didn't really have any issues with this book from a craft perspective. Like, I know it's not a perfect book because that doesn't exist. Exist, but nothing really jumped out at me. I guess you could argue there isn't a ton of character development, but I don't really think there was meant to be. I think that Zaychan's just getting started and her arc will be complete at the end of the sequel. And I suppose other characters don't feel very fully fleshed out, but I would say that's because it's narrated in the first person and there's no change in points of view. You don't get in any other character's heads. And how's Zay Chen supposed to know what's going on inside other characters' heads? She's not a psychic. But that that wasn't an issue for me. So the things that I actually didn't really like about this book are just really personal to me. So the things that I really didn't like about this book are just really personal to me. Like this might sound cringe, but like the misogyny in this world in Huesha is just so intense that it was upsetting to read. That thing with the feet horrifying. Zay Chan's family didn't deserve the grace they were given, and I hope something bad happens to them in the future. Something real bad. And I don't really know why, but Zay Chen kind of reminded me of my birth mother. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but for those of you who don't know, I'm adopted. My mother gave me up when she was two weeks old, and she had a tough choice to make. Like, she could keep me, but she would be excommunicated from her family. It would have been just me and her against the world, and she didn't feel like she had what it took to be a single mother without the support of her community. We don't talk about it too much, but I know that was a really hard, traumatic experience for her. And I guess all this, like, pressure that Zay Chen's family puts on her to be less than she is for the sake of the family or for the honor of the family or, or to meet like societal expectations just reminded me of my mom. But like in a weird way, and I understand that that's not like a valid critique of the book. It's like a huge bias. I don't know, y'all. This book just made me pretty sad. I really wanted to give it like four or four and a half stars. Because like I said before, I think this book is really cool. You know, it's got really good twists. It's got good action. 
And I think the world's about to open up in a way that's going to be really exciting to read about in the sequel. Bad. <laughs> but I just felt really bad the whole time I was reading it. So I think I got to give it like 3.75 stars. I'm deducting points for trauma. But is it good? Yeah. Really good. Did I enjoy it? No. No, I, I, I don't think I can say I did. Would I recommend it though? Yes. Like I said before, this book is really cool. The premise is cool. The power system is well thought out. There's transforming robots. The world is mysterious and intriguing. It's exploring really powerful themes. It made me feel a lot of things. I think it's executed really well. The characters are I. Like I said before, like this book is inspired by anime, so it has a lot of the aspects of anime that I enjoy, and it leaves out a lot of the aspects of anime that I don't enjoy. Like pervy humor and shouting the names of your attacks if you don't like anime at all like this is still pretty sci-fi and it reads like a novel so please don't let my love of anime deter you from reading this book so yeah i think that's it for me this week if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel please subscribe so you don't miss another video and again thank you to all the new subscribers in the comments asking for more bookish content from me these videos are really fun to make and i don't really get to talk to my friends or my wife about the books that i'm reading so this is great I already have my next couple of videos already planned out, but if there's a specific book that you'd like me to review, just put it in the comments and I'll think about it. If you've read Iron Widow, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is D. Don't fret. I'll see you next time. Peace.